everyone, it's uh, David Amelia Jensen here, uh, Jensen Fly Fishing, and in this video we're sharing just a, an absolute spectacular day of fly fishing in the high country for brown trout. It's a video full of dry fly eats, and we think you're going to love it because it was a, an amazing day. Uh, please be sure to subscribe and like our channel and provide any comments that you have. We always appreciate that. Yeah, and you know, this one is, uh, this particular stream is kind of a spiritual experience to us in a way, you know. Um, it's actually few trout per kilometer, maybe one or two trout per kilometer. But you know, you're just walking through spectacular landscape. I don't know, I feel like I'm close to the stars up yeah, there, you know, like it's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Really, it's a video that speaks for itself. I won't drone on too much here. I hope you love it. Um, we all have our magical places and thing, uh, places that mean just the world to our, our hearts and our mind's eye. Really, it's a, you know, in our spirit. This, this little creek speaks to our spirit, and we hope that it speaks to yours as well. Yeah. Yeah, so what a spot, hey? Um, nice, deep trough, right tight to the bank, um, exactly where the fish should be. Yeah. And, you know, it's, he's... He's been showing. He's exactly where he is. <laughs> yeah, but not perpetually. No. He's using that undercut slough bank to hide. He is, and the shadow in there. And he's only so many times coming out to his right into the sun. And that's how we got him. We even saw him for the first time yeah. as we saw a bit of a gold tail. Because he was right Just on that there. shade. But it took probably three, four minutes of staring into that pocket before we saw yes. even a twinkle of a tail. Yeah. We knew there was a 90% chance that there was a fish there because... Oh, upstream is just nothing but shallow riffles emptying into a corner pocket with a slough bank overhanging cover with a trough. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where the fish is going to be. Yeah. So. so what are you going to do? I think my approach, honestly, the best um, so that I get out of the tail out drag will be to go across um, and to get right below him. Um, so I'm casting directly upstream and that way I can, I don't think I'll need to lead this fish a whole lot. Um, when he feeds, he feeds, but by a couple feet and that way I get out of any tail out drag. And just slide him a fly into him, eh? Yep, absolutely. Wicked. Skinny water, hey? Yeah, it really is skinny water right now. I think he's he's not leaving that shadow line much. He's just rising a few times in there and then 
You'll swing out, eh? Out of that foam line? Yeah, he's staying, you know, pretty much in the seam, but yeah, he'll only swing out maybe, you know, six inches left or right. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if he sees something he wants, because we've seen him take a couple oh, mayflies, yeah. right? So. What do you, uh, yeah. set up, leader, well, tip it flies? Yeah, basically right now I've got about a 13 foot leader and it's down to 4X on my top dry. I'm doing a double dry setup. And I've got, um, Actually, two essentially the top top dry is like a larger caddis. The bottom is a, a size 14 caddis, so and two I elk suspect care caddis, pretty much, yeah, sizes. one's just different sizes, right? Just something that's going to land gently on that water. Yeah, right? exactly. So, and I think that's all that's needed. Um, you know, in this particular water, we don't need to get real specific with mayflies. It's not like, no. you know, we're it's all these eating. We're above where most people fish. We're only likely to see four to ten fish tops today, yeah. and they're going to be kind of like this. We're going to do a lot of walking. There might be yes. a kilometer between these little pockets. Yeah, and I think he's in enough depth that honestly, when it comes to approach, I'm just going to come in from downstream, get probably to about the middle of the river, and get a cast up to him. Um, I want to get it in the seam line as oh, best you just I gotta can. Get the seam. And this is, this yeah, is a cutthroat. This, yeah. is, <laughs> this one's a cutthroat. Yeah, exactly. So how many casts do you think oh, you're gonna need? I really should just like honestly one good one. One good one. Yeah. One one good false cast Ten bucks. and then one <laughs> Ten bucks is one cast. Yeah, yeah. To get Something's the fish, happen. one cast. Well to yeah. get the take. Absolutely. You don't know you what's gonna happen after exactly. that. Awesome. Quite the little pocket for a high country. Just no, no chance of seeing this fish from this side. But you saw him across the way, hey? Yeah, I sure did. And he's just surfing off of that seam line, you know, left and right. He's just going around in that pool. So I think a cast, you know, right up off that seam should do it. Yeah, how, you, how are you going to approach it? Well, you still got that 13 foot leader with the double caddis set up. Two different sizes of caddis. You know what? Three X. Uh, again, we're up here. We're above where everybody fishes. There's so few fish up here. Uh, there's one one fish per excellent pocket, and this is the second excellent pocket. We might see 10 today. What I'm trying to say by that is, I just gotta get behind it, place the caddis in front of his nose, and I bet you he comes off the bottom and eats the thing. Yeah, so exactly. I'm just gonna get behind him, and let's just go see what happens. Eh? Sounds great.
Yeah, so this fish is just holding in a nice, nice little trough here as it comes down to the depth of water he needs it. And I really think it's pretty simple. I should just be able to put my flies, you know, upstream of him a few feet and maybe a foot to his right because he is willing to come out into the sun to feed. We've seen him cycle around in there a couple times. So that's my plan. And um, I plan to use basically, again, a 13 foot leader um, down to a double dry. I'm going double caddis on this. So the call now is a five or six inch dropper to a little green nymph, just something subsurface. Uh, obviously that, that take was, was one of those popping takes that pushes all the water and that tip had just got caught in the surface tension and the fly just went right over top. So now it's just a matter of a dropper nymph and see what happens.
Thank you.